This has to be the most requested whiskey so far on this show. Hey guys, it's Chris here, the host of the Whiskey Noobs Podcast, and today we're going to be drinking Brothers Bond Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Um, I've had this requested on Instagram multiple times and on TikTok multiple times, so I'm very excited to go through it with you. Um, you might recall that this was actually asked in one of the Q&A episodes as well, and I said, yes, we'll, we'll definitely do an episode on it, um, but I didn't have any of it yet. Well, I do have some now, and I'm really excited to go through it because I'm, I'm looking at the marketing on the website and everything, and let me tell you, they do a good job of marketing this whiskey. That's without a doubt. Uh, I mentioned before, this whiskey, Brothers Bond Straight Bourbon Whiskey, uh, this is made by the Brothers on Vampire Diaries, if you've watched that show. Uh, not Brothers in Real Life, but Brothers on the Show, and the two actors, Paul Wesley and Ian Sommerholder, they created this whiskey and they say that it's, uh, I, I forget how they, exactly how they put it. Um, I can look a, around a little bit on their website, but they say that it uh, has to do with the bond that they, they grew as they went through the show together. And the marketing for it is fantastic. They have great, like, I don't want to say commercials, but um, I haven't really seen them like on the television, but I don't really see TV commercials because I pretty much only watch Netflix. Uh, but but the videos that I've seen online, ads, I guess, uh, are all really, really good. I mean, they make me want to drink it. And looking through their website pretty quickly in preparation for this episode, uh, they have a very in-depth website. I mean, they go through a lot of it. You guys know... I'm a huge fan of when there's a backstory to a whiskey and when they give more information. If you've been listening for a while, you know that I'm big on that. And they do. I mean, they give you a bunch of information about this whiskey on their website. So I'm excited to go through it uh, and do just a full end-to-end -end review. This, Like I said, this has been requested a lot. Um, I actually had a couple other things I was thinking about doing with, with this episode, like with this bourbon. But I think this needs to just be a review episode because everybody's asking about it. I don't know if it's going to be an up-and-comer or if it's just because the two guys are famous. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the awesome marketing campaign. But I've had a lot of people ask me to try this whiskey. So... I bought a bottle. I did not open it until a, a few minutes before this started recording, and I only smelled it once. I couldn't help myself. I did smell it once, but I haven't taken a sip yet. So this is this. I haven't had any whiskey yet today. I haven't had anything aside from dinner. Dinner wasn't spicy, wasn't crazy, so my palate should be in pretty good shape, uh, and we're going to see if we can get the flavors that they say we are supposed to get. So Brothers Bond Bourbon. Let's run through... Um, just the details of it real quick. So I already told you who made it and why it's, I think it's famous. Uh, so let's talk about the details. It is a straight bourbon whiskey. Now you might remember that straight means that the youngest whiskey in this, if it's multiple barrels, the youngest whiskey in it has to be at least two years old. So overall, this is at least a two year old whiskey. Um, it is 40% alcohol by volume, which is the minimum for bourbon. The color they put sunset gold, uh, all of the notes we'll get to later but they do also say the length of the finish is one minute and 30 seconds on their website which is really interesting and then they say i'm guessing they're talking about the smell it says empty glass beeswax i'm guessing they're saying the empty glass smells like beeswax very interesting like i said just a very in-depth bourbon i'm very in-depth website about this bourbon so so far for marketing, they get a 10 out of 10. We'll see if this bourbon lives up to the marketing. Uh, this was $40, if I recall correctly. Um, I'm in Ohio, so in my area. Uh, and they also put, it's one of those whiskeys where they put the little booklet on top with information. You know how sometimes it'll be tied around the neck of the bottle. They do that on this bottle. And so just to go into it real quick before we get to the good stuff, uh, they do have a little... How do I want to put it? Like story, little little paragraph summary um, about their whiskey on the bottle as well. And like I said, the website is very extensive. 
But one thing that's pretty cool and actually included in this little booklet is that they give back a portion of the profits to support regenerative agriculture and farming farming practices to slow climate change by sequestering carbon while producing oxygen. I like I like the marketing because you've got uh, your more blue collar, which is usually you know right leaning people on the farming practices and agriculture, and you've also got your left leaning people on the on the climate change. So. Pretty clever. Pretty clever marketing, if that's the purpose of it. I see everything as marketing nowadays, so I'm assuming it is. Uh, they say, by purchasing a bottle of our handcrafted bourbon, you are also helping to make the world a better place, one drink at a time, and we thank you. And then it's got a, a printout of their signatures on it as well. So, very extensive marketing. I've probably said that three times already, four times, but it's impressive. It's extensive. Uh, the logo, it's like corn, which is cool too. Like I said, getting the getting the farmers. But without further ado, we're gonna get into the review of it because I don't know if I'm gonna get the right notes, considering this is the first time I'm having it, and I want to go through it twice: once without the notes, and then once looking at the notes and kind of comparing a little bit. Also, uh, one fair warning: I always try to be transparent. I did accidentally see uh, the nose. But when I was looking up the information for this, so I do know the nose that they say you should get, but I will compare. There's a very strong sweetness on the nose. Um, there's definitely alcohol there. Um, for for a forty percent, there seems to be a lot of alcohol there. Not necessarily bad. Like I don't want to say that I'm just trashing this already, um, but there is definitely alcohol there. Now there's a sweetness there that I would not have been able to call out if I didn't already read the nose. It's a weird sweetness. So you've got almost like a almost like a vanilla-y, caramel-y smell, right? But there's also something else there, and I probably would not have guessed this if I didn't read it, but they call it banana bread, and I <clears throat> do see that since they told me that. Um, I might consider it, if I didn't know this, I might say there's like a fruitiness with like caramel vanilla and maybe nuttiness, but uh, the banana bread's pretty accurate. So that is very pleasant and very uncommon. I have had, I think it's Old Forester 1910, if I'm not mistaken. There's so many Old Foresters. I think it's 1910 that tastes kind of like banana bread. And it was really good. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see. I'm probably going to end up kind of comparing this to it. Uh, but if it, if it does taste like it, I'll be very happy. I love banana flavored things, by the way. Full disclosure. On the palate, I'd say more of the same. Um, still a little bit of alcohol harshness. But this is also my first sip of whiskey tonight, as I mentioned. So I'm, gonna, I'm definitely not going to uh, just trash it for that yet. I'm going to give it a second chance for sure. Got to get the palate warmed up. Um, but still more of the banana bread type flavor. There's definitely the the sugary, maybe brown sugary flavor that you have in the banana bread, like you know the flavor that's not the banana. Uh, so that it has that sugary flavor, that vanilla uh, with it, and then there is definitely a little bit of banana in there as well. <clears throat> that's probably stuck in my head from the nose, so I, I could be missing flavors that they're going to say, uh, but definitely like a, like a bakery sweet, maybe a little bit of honey or like syrup. It could be like maple syrup or honey, something, something with that kind of a, a flavor. Haven't really paid attention to the mouthfeel yet. I'm going to wait and do another sip for that. Uh, but not an overly complex palette yet. I'm going to try it again. Like I said, get my palate warmed up. Um, but definitely not one where your first sip it's multi-dimensional, kind of like um, the Red Breast 12 that we had. Glenn Fittick definitely does that, and even um, like some less expensive bourbons, like I think Buffalo Trace has a pretty complex palette for its price range. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try it again though before I jump to any conclusions here. Okay, that sip was more impressive. Um, it was definitely. A lot softer on the front end than the first sip was. So my palate definitely wasn't quite warmed up yet. And a little softer on the finish as well. A little bit smoother. Um, definitely has that kind of syrupy feel that you can get. Especially with your 80 proof bourbons. That kind of syrupy feel where it dances around on your tongue a little bit while you're moving it around. Um, still not the, you know, the, the smoothest finish in the entire world. Still a little bit of dryness to it. Not the most oily mouth feel. That's the word I was looking for. But... Definitely nothing off-putting 
in that sip at all. I mean, this is this is feeling like a bourbon, but kind of the same idea that I, we said about Crown Royal, where it's just not off-putting. Um, but there's definitely more complexity there than, than there was in the Crown Royal. To me, Crown Royal just tastes like general whiskey and sweetness. And this has more going on than just the general whiskey and sweetness. I can still taste the banana, whether it's because of the nose or not. There's definitely a little bit there. And still what I would call either syrup or honey. I might lean towards syrup because of that brown sugar, but not like maple. That's what's tough. Is It's not like super duper mapley, but a little bit, you know. It's like it's like more of the sweet from the syrup and like half of the amount of maple as syrup. Uh, that syrup has so syrup or syrup I'm probably gonna get made fun of whichever way I say it so I like to say I think I don't think I ever really said syrup until I watched elf which it's Christmas time so now it's super appropriate conversation for right now uh, but how he says maple syrup uh, we all stick to the four main food groups you you know it you I know you know it whether you're pretending to know it or not <laughs> um, but he says syrup and I think ever since then, I've kind of just naturally said syrup just because I heard it. And we watch Elf every year in my family, so it's like stuck in my head. But let's give this another quick try before we go to, to their actual notes. But I will say, so far, I think it's very good. This is a first impression. But I do think it's very good, probably a touch overpriced. Um, for $40, I expect a good amount of complexity out of a bourbon. When you've got something like Wild Turkey 101 that's $26 or $24, I think, and it has that kind of complexity, same with Buffalo Trace, um, I do expect a bit more from a $40 bourbon. But I also expect it to be a little bit overpriced since it's a celebrity bourbon. So for $40, um, if it wasn't a celebrity bourbon, it'd, it'd be a little bit overpriced so far. I'm going to keep drinking it and and see what happens. I'm pretty impressed. I'm pretty impressed. There's, It's one of those bourbons. We've mentioned this before. I've definitely talked about this, where it's complex in that the more you look at it, the more flavors you get. But it's not complex in that they all kind of progress in this symphony and they change and evolve it's more like every time you drink it you kind of got to pick out something different um because this time i got almost a butteriness that you get from barley I, I don't know the mash bill of this i don't know if they tell you i should look on their website but it almost gives me that butteriness that i get from like an irish so that was pleasant and and with the banana bread i mean that's super pleasant um definitely leaning towards honey over maple syrup now or just like a non-maple syrup but that's basically what honey is i feel like but that is definitely um a, a pleasant flavor and i'm really sad that this is 40 dollars because i i think for like 30 this would be an equivalent I don't know an equivalent, but this would be up there towards Buffalo Trace for me if it was underpriced a bit more, if it was lower priced. Just be, and I don't want people thinking that I mean this is as good as Buffalo Trace. Uh, you know how I am with Buffalo Trace. But what I mean is this is a very solid, very non-offensive bourbon for like $30, but not quite for $40. But it does have that similar profile that I love with bourbons. Is that bakery sweet profile, and that always gets me super excited when it's it's a lot of the sweets, and not a lot of the maybe bitterness or, or lots of spices. There there's kind of a spiciness to it, but it's not overly spicy. Um, <clears throat> the thing I will say is that there's definitely still some harshness there. Uh, but it's it's weird. It's not like the overly offensive piercing harshness that super dries out your tongue. It's more like a lot of not super offensive harshness. It's like a full bodied harshness where, you know, the harshness level is only like 50 percent. But the size of that harshness is like 100 percent. I don't know if that made any amount of sense. Kind of like a lot of not very spicy hot sauce versus a little bit of really spicy hot sauce. That is a good analogy. I'm sticking to that. <laughs> but that's kind of what it is like. Um, I also am realizing I didn't really mention the legs at all. Not a ton of legs and not huge legs. So kind of skinny and kind of far spaced out. Something you would expect for sure from a young and 80 proof bourbon. So I'm not very surprised by that. 
like I said, not an overly huge amount of body. I said the burn had body, but I'm talking about the flavors now. Not an overly huge amount of body. Not like, wow. And I think that is where this would fall short of like a Buffalo Trace is Buffalo Trace has a lot of body. You do have to hunt out the flavors just a little bit. Um, but it's very good. And I would say aside from if you could, t- if they tone down the burn just a little bit, this would be really excellent. Um, but so far I'm enjoying it. I have a really good impression of it. I think it would be fair priced at probably $35 and I think it'd be well priced. It would be well priced at, uh, $30. I think that would be like perfect. I I don't know if I just said 30 twice. I meant 35 the first time. If I did, uh, I'm going to give this one more shot and then we're going to go through their tasting notes. I caught a smell right when I was taking a sip of it. One of those smells that takes you, takes you somewhere immediately. I figured it out. It almost smells like like a like a sunscreen. Like a <laughs> like a banana sunscreen, if that makes sense. Is banana boat banana scented? I don't think it is. I think it's coconut. I don't know though. If it is, that's what it smells like. It I, I almost it reminded me of like the beach almost for a second there. But definitely that warmth, like not burn, warmth warm flavors. Warm syrupiness. Um, this, I will say, without a doubt, there's no doubt in my mind, every sip of this has gotten better, and that's impressive. So it's not it's not remaining stagnant. I'm getting something else in every sip. The finish has been a little bit of an oddball. First time, it was a little bit harsh, but my palate wasn't warmed up. Second time, felt really good, really smooth. Not overly oily, but a little bit. Uh, third time, felt a little bit harsh again. And then fourth time just now felt a little bit smooth again. So I, I think maybe it was just the fact that my palate wasn't warmed up. It was getting, it was a little bit strange. But I think it is smoothing out the more that I drink it. Um, and that happens where whiskeys change as you drink them. And Bryce and I talked about that with Pendleton where the more you drink it, it actually got a little bit bitter. This is having the opposite. This is gaining that buttery sweetness that I'm, I'm very much enjoying. So let's go through their notes uh, without further ado. So on the nose, I already said uh, baked banana bread, <clears throat> but they give you a ton of notes. Uh, so we'll go through all of them. They say baked banana bread, ripe, ripe tree fruit, alt walnuts. Ugh, I can't read today. They say baked banana bread, ripe tree fruit, walnuts, orange honey, warm rye, spice. Uh, that's that's solid. I don't really get the honey on the nose as much as I got it in the uh, palate. Yeah, but definitely the baked banana bread. Like I said, I had seen that. I don't think it's overly fruity, and it's almost something that I like about it because this tastes more like a dessert to me. Um, but the walnuts, I didn't say walnuts, obviously, but I agree. I think there's a nuttiness to it that I like. And then the honey, like I said, I got that more on the palate. The rye spice, I don't see. This seems really mellow to me. This seems more mellow than a rye to me. Um, You could attribute the spiciness to a little bit of alcohol burn that I get on the nose, but this definitely does not seem as, as spicy as a rye. Now for the taste, they say toasted cereal grain, honeysuckle, dried fruit, black tea, and spice. I am so glad that I'm not crazy. The toasted cereal grain, how I was saying that butteriness that I get from like barley, that that makes sense right there. Like a, um, I always say Irish whiskeys, it's kind of like butteriness and like granola, toasted cereal grain. That actually applies pretty well. And then the honeysuckle with it, um, like I said, honey for sure. I, I for sure get a honey. Dried fruit, I still don't get a lot of fruit from this. And I have to sit down with it a, a separate time with a you know different palate condition and try it. But I don't get an overwhelming amount of fruit from this. Black tea, I can see a little bit. I'm not as enough of an avid tea drinker to really for sure say. Because um, I, I, if I do drink tea, it's usually green tea. But I could probably see it. The floral kind of essence there, I could say. Um, and then once again, spice. I don't see a lot of spice unless they're attributing it to that alcohol burn. I don't see a lot of spice. Yeah, I just tried it again, and I'm still not seeing a ton of the spice. But uh, the finish they have as fresh cut oak. And I I don't think that's appropriate 
based on comparison to other whiskeys. Let me put it that way. I always say this with, with bourbons, or I should say based on comparison to other bourbons. Um, I always say this with bourbons. You have to be pretty oaky for me to call you oaky because some bourbons have a lot of oak in it. I had one the other day that did. I don't remember it, which one it was off the top of my head, but I remember thinking, ah, yes, that's what oaky tastes like. This isn't overwhelmingly oaky. When I read it and then tasted it, I'm like, ah, yeah, there's oak in there. Um, but nothing like absurd, nothing super duper oaky in there. Um, so I don't want people to be off put by that. Sometimes oakiness is very off putting for people. And I, I don't think you'll be off put by this. This, this tastes like dessert bakery to me. Um, every sip that you take, you smell that light banana that they talk about and those walnuts on the nose. I would certainly say those, those make it into the palate. They don't put it on there, but I would say that it does. Um, and it's, it's pleasant for that reason. It's got that pleasant pleasant bakery bourbon that I always say that I enjoy, which might be why you might have noticed that I'm very much enjoying this. Um, because I always say that that's like my favorite type of bourbon. You know, everybody has a different palate. Some bourbons are a lot more fruity. Some bourbons are a lot more, um, sweet spices, uh, some, or high rye bourbons, sometimes not just sweet spices, but also, you know, spicy spices, (laughs) uh, harsher spices. Uh, some bourbons have a whole lot of oakiness up front and that's what you get from it. Uh, but my favorite for sure is the, the bakery type and I'm a sucker for banana. I mean, big time. And so I am enjoying this without a doubt. Uh, I would say this is something I would keep on my shelf for sure. It's not something I would go nuts over. Um, it's not something that I'd be like, if I see it at the store, I'm going to buy it. I would just keep a bottle of it on my shelf. And I will probably continue to keep a bottle of it on my shelf. But as far as bourbons go, not bad. I would keep it on my shelf, if nothing else, for the story and the awesome marketing. I mean, I I love good marketing. I think I've discussed that before on, like, the shapes of bottles, and I like cool shapes of bottles. This one doesn't have, you know, a super wowing presentation, nothing crazy. Um, but the marketing external to the bottle is done very well. So that's pretty cool. And I'm going to take another sip, and I'm going to also look at a little bit more of their backstory just to fill you guys in a little bit. Still kind of looking through here and still enjoying this. Last sip was a little bit more bitter. It does evolve as you drink it. It doesn't evolve on the the first palate. Like the one palate doesn't evolve into a bunch of flavors. Uh, But as you drink it, it evolves a little bit, so that's impressive. Um, But I also found on their website where it says, we envisioned our bourbon being enjoyed neat and tasting exceptional. And that's what they, it says they made their dreams reality. But I just wanted to point out that it does say they like, they want their bourbon to be enjoyed neat. Uh, So that is something to keep in mind for some people who think that all whiskey has to be drank on ice. That's a debate right now. Um, Just something to put out there. I'm not trying to say I told you so. I'm just saying that this specific bourbon does say it's meant to be enjoyed neat. Just something to keep in mind. It does say that they have corn, rye, wheat, and barley in it. Barley is listed last, so if that is by weight, that surprises me. I expected more of a barley from that little bit of barley taste that I got. Um, I could see the uh, wheat, though. That that makes sense. But I, I wouldn't picture rye being the second. And they mentioned rye twice in their notes. So maybe I need to try this again and I'm just not getting the rye for some reason. Ooh, that last sip, I don't know what it was, did kind of taste like rye. <clears throat> maybe I'm just not warmed up all the way. But I did get a little bit more rye there. Like I said, though, it evolves. It evolves as you drink it. My first few sips were pure sweetness. That honey, or they call it honey suckle, that is for sure in every sip. I love on their website, if you guys are curious about their process, their distillation process, their ingredients, all that, they they tell you pretty much everything. It's pretty cool, actually. They go through a lot. Obviously, there's some things that are proprietary. They don't tell you, like, the mash bill. It says they have a proprietary yeast strain. But they walk through it all. Very cool. Like I said, great marketing. And there's a lot of whiskeys with great marketing. I just uh, happened to notice this one and their ads online. They do, so it does say that it's meant to be enjoyed neat, but they do have a bunch of cocktail recipes on their website as well. And one thing I will say about the marketing, since I've been talking about how much I like it, I will say that it's a little bit corny. I I should have added that. I meant their commercials make me want to drink whiskey, without a doubt, Um, but they are a little bit tough, rugged man, obvious, you know? But, But, needless to say, they do a good job of making me want to drink whiskey. 
And their cocktails look great too, so can't complain. All right, I'm going to take one more sip, do another quick review of this, but I think that's going to almost round it out for this episode. Um, I'm very impressed by this whiskey. I think it was fantastic. I'm going to try it one more time. Yeah, I'll stand by the fact that I don't know if it's rye spiciness or if it is just that the whiskey's a little bit hot. Because it might just be that the whiskey's a little bit hot. It doesn't give me super uber rye flavors, but also it is a bourbon. It's not a rye. So it could be that there's rye flavors mixed in there. It could be that the whiskey's a little bit hot. And it could be a little bit of both, which is kind of what I'm assuming. But it's enjoyable. I'll stand by saying this isn't... A Buffalo Trace, this isn't something I'm going to freak out and really want to buy. Um, I think like Four Roses Single Barrel, I also really love that bourbon. Big into Maker's Mark 46. Uh, this isn't up there, but it's very good. I would keep it on my shelf, and I'm interested to continue drinking it and have another glass and it, on a different palate and try it again on a different palate because pretty much there's never a whiskey that I drink one time and I'm like, this is my new favorite. So there is the potential that this could get up there with those other whiskeys for me uh, because I, I really like it. I'm very impressed by it. I would put this up there in terms of if I didn't know what I was going to the store to buy, didn't know what I wanted, and I saw this, there's a there's a good chance I'd grab it if I was in that kind of a mood because definitely it is not unenjoyable, especially for being so young. There's no age statement. They just say that it's straight, so you know it's two years old. Um, being as young it is, as it is, it, you can't complain, but also being as young as it is, you shouldn't. it shouldn't be this expensive in my opinion. That's just That's my personal opinion. But to each his own, and I do recommend you try it if you haven't already. If you're not on the whiskey list, um, I recommend you try it. One added note before we round out about the whiskey list, the email list. As always, you can join that. If, if you don't know this already, you can join that by sending an email to whiskeynoobspodcast at gmail.com uh, and just put email list in the, the description. I put that at the end of every episode, but you might not catch it since it's after all of, all of the episode. Once again, just send an email and put email list in the subject line to whiskeynoobspodcast at gmail.com. That's all you have to do to join. You don't even have to fill out the email, but I know a lot of people like to send me a little note, uh, maybe a little bit of feedback, and I love that. So if you want to do that, that's more than okay. I, I love reading that from you guys, but you don't have to. Don't feel pressured to write out an email. Just put email list in the subject line. Now, one thing, and I wanted to bring that up, before this so that I would give the glass a little bit of time to kind of dry out is that I want to check it said empty glass beeswax I'm guessing they meant that's how it smelled and so I wanted to let it dry out a little bit and then see if if I got beeswax so my glass is dry we're gonna give it a sniff wow the dried glass smells amazing first of all if this is a candle oh my goodness I don't think beeswax though I think brown sugar and maybe like a little bit of honey, which I, maybe I don't know what beeswax smells like 100%, but I don't think it's really brown sugary, but uh, strong brown sugar. I would say strong brown sugar and honey. That's very impressive. That smells awesome. Uh, so yeah, Brothers Bond bourbon, I mean, I don't do like one out of 10 ratings really ever, um, but I just, I'm impressed. This is, this isn't, this isn't something to write home about. This isn't uh, something that was a bad experience. But this isn't in the middle either. This is a little bit above the middle. I'm very impressed. I'm excited to see if I continue to be as impressed or become more impressed. But for the fact, I think maybe another factor in all of this is that it's a celebrity whiskey. So I expect maybe they're going to slack a little bit. But I don't get that at all. I think slacking would be if this didn't have any special notes, this didn't have anything crazy going on, it was just bland, um, or just tasted like quote-unquote bourbon, like that's all it tasted like. But there definitely is different things going on here with that little bit of banana flavor, that little bit of nuttiness, and for sure the honey. Um, there's a different palate going on here, and it's impressive. So uh, I highly recommend, like I said, if you haven't tried it, try it. If you're not on the email list, get on there. But that's all that I've got for this episode today. Brothers Bond Bourbon, give it a try. Watch a couple of their ads. Look up some of their cocktails. They do a great job of the directing of it and the marketing of it. A little bit rugged, a little bit stereotypical, but pretty good. Look it up. Try it. Let me know what you think. And as always, don't forget, 
Learn to drink, drink to learn. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Whiskey Noobs. If you like the show, please make sure that you tell anyone you know who you think would be interested in the hobby or in the podcast. That way we can help to spread the word and continue to grow. Please also make sure to review the show on Apple Podcasts and share our posts on Instagram at whiskey underscore noobs or on TikTok at whiskey noobs podcast. Uh, it only takes a couple of minutes and it really does a lot to help spread the word and grow the podcast. Also, there is an email list for the show. If you'd like to join, you can just send an email to whiskey noobs podcast at gmail.com and in the subject line put email list i will add you to the list and then you'll be updated every month with the whiskeys that we will be drinking on the show throughout the month that way you can drink right along with us and see if you're getting the same notes once again thank you so much for listening to the show the whiskey noobs podcast does not support underage or otherwise irresponsible consumption of alcohol